What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to Throwback Thursdays. Today I got a pretty awesome, amazing, nostalgic experience. Shin Mew Part 1 for the Sega Dreamcast. This game here means a lot to me and it means a lot to many gamers around the world and there's a lot of reasons why. This game changed the, the landscape of RPG gaming. It's not just an RPG, it's an action game. It's open world. There's so many mini games, so many things you can do in this game. You investigate like you do in L.A. Noir. You, you fight in real time. You get to go and hang out and play in arcades. You uh, talk to non-player characters that lead you in certain directions. I'm actually going to play the entire intro to this game so you guys can kind of see what's going on. Uh, you're a character named Ryu, and. Uh, you you come across a man named Landi who is uh, accosting your father in, inside of your gojo, and uh, your father ends up uh, taking an L, losing to this guy, and uh, losing his life. And basically, you as Ryu take take it upon yourself throughout this game. It's supposed to have been a trilogy, but they didn't they didn't do it right. You take it uh, upon yourself to uh, hunt down Landi. And so the first two games of Shin Mew were released. The third game never came out. It took them $47 million to make the first game. $47 million. Now this game came out in 1999, so we're talking big money. Uh, that would be around 66 or $67 million today just for uh, RPG. Uh, this game has so many fantastic elements. One thing I gotta say now, that's kind of funny listening to it now as a, a man in my 30s, the voice acting is absolutely terrible, okay? <laughs> it really is. It, it's atrocious. And more than likely, the reason I feel the way I do about the voice acting now is because I've gotten so used to watching uh, anime and watching, you know, Naruto or, you know, uh, just Samurai X. I mean, I, I watch so many really good animes that have actual Japanese uh, you know, audio and not American voiceovers. Some of them, you know, sound good with American voiceovers. Uh, Helsing does, you know, but like Ranma, things like that, I watch in Japanese and I think this game would have definitely been better with the original audio or at least an option for you to keep that audio. One good thing about this game, another great thing, I can't say one, this game has so many good things about it, is that it really keeps with the culture of Japan. Uh, they didn't change much of the aesthetic of the game to make it more Western. They, uh, it's basically the exact same game here that you would have got over in Japan, except for the fact that they're speaking and, you know, it sounds like the Aladdin characters when you talk. You, you get into really awesome fights, you learn, you know, new moves. It's an upgrade system that they, that they use. This game is one of the first uh, RPGs to use QTE. Quick time events, it's quick time during fights, quick time all the time. You get to, to drive vehicles. I mean, this game is truly an epic experience for anybody out there who might still have a Dreamcast. This game is definitely worth picking it up putting it in that console and spending some real time on because you can really get deep into it. It was really, really weird picking up the Dreamcast controller and playing this game and I looked over at my wife and I said, wow, they still don't understand what the analog is for because it's tank controls and you run with the L trigger and, and you use the D-pad to actually, you know, control the direction where you go throughout the game. The one analog on the Dreamcast is used for visualization. You can move around and look at certain objects with the analog. And of course the Dreamcast controller only has one analog, so you know the prospect of using a real controller, now we think of it as a real controller, is totally throughout the window. It's kind of like going back in time and playing Resident Evil or something, uh, the way that this game controls. But nonetheless, it's very fun. There's tons and tons of side quests in this game. I mean, you'll be walking through a town and somebody will walk up to you and ask you, can you can you help me do this or can you show me this? And you've just got so many hours worth of gameplay in this game. Um, another great thing about this game is it's one of the first RPGs that I ever played that had real Sega arcade games in it. 
Um, the two that it has, one of them actually happened to be one of my favorite Sega arcade games growing up, was Space Harrier. Space Harrier for the arcade is actually on this game. It's the arcade port and Hang On uh, is on the game as well. And, and both of these games were programmed by the creator Shin Yu, Yu Suzuki. So that's a really big perk. You know, you can go into the arcade and play original games or like little new IPs in there. And you can play some of, you know, some of the actual Sega arcades. There are dark games in there as well. So, I mean, it's just so much you can do in this game. The story is deep. I'm not going to spoil anything. The, the opening sequence basically lays the foundation of what you're going to be doing throughout this game. You're going to walk around and ask people about what happened on that day, referring to the day that your father was bested by Landy. But I want to talk a little bit about the future of this franchise. Now, part one and part two came out. They had a $70 million budget to create both of the games. And uh, it took 47 for the first game, and so the remainder was left for the second, and and it got shelved because they the game cost so much to make that they would have had to have sold two copies of Shinmu to everyone who owned a Dreamcast just to turn a profit. So that's how little this this game actually sold. It has a cult following now. It's kind of like Arrested Development. People didn't really. Uh, and on top of that, there weren't that many Dreamcasts actually in circulation at the time, but it didn't sell like gangbusters. It did not do well commercially when it was first released. And so now a lot of people over the years have had an opportunity to play it, and it's become a cult thing. And now the world is waiting for Shinryu 3, which they have been sitting on. Now, uh, this game is definitely worth picking up and playing. Shinryu 2 is a great game. Shinryu 3... I'm cautiously optimistic. It's, it's one of those things where you know, you know it's going to happen. And uh, there's really nothing that, that can deter you from that thought. I know Shinryu 3 is coming. I'm just, it's just a scary thought as to what they could do to mess up this fantastic franchise. Uh, also, a little side note off, off the subject of Shinryu. There appears to be a new Power Rangers movie uh, being uh, developed and being made for the big screen. Uh, if you guys remember the Power Rangers, comment down in the comment section and let me know who your favorite Ranger was. I gotta go with uh, with Zack, because uh, he was one of the originals. Yeah, I'm an old guy. I remember the original Power Rangers, Kimberly with the little pink. Yeah, yeah, I remember all that stuff. You guys let me know who your favorite Ranger was and, and let me know if you think this, this movie could come out and potentially be a, a hit. I mean, it seems like the Power Rangers have been obscure and gone for so long. I'm truly amazed that they're going to try to bring them back out after all this time with seemingly little or no promotion. So you guys let me know what you think about that. Also, for PS4 and Xbox One, the top selling games so far, the, the number one game for both consoles has been Call of Duty Ghosts. That's right. So for everybody who thought the COD wasn't going to sell, you're absolutely wrong. The game is selling like hotcakes. You guys, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.